Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining today's webinar. My name is Stefan Schinkel, and I'm the Chief Sales Officer at .CMS and one of the hosts uh, today. Uh, before we get started, um, I'd like to share some housekeeping uh, with you. All lines are muted uh, during the webinar, and uh, at the end of the, uh, the presentation, you have an opportunity to ask questions in the uh, chat box. And lastly, uh, this webinar will be recorded and is available afterwards. So before we get started with today's topic, I'd like to give a brief overview of .CMS uh, for those who are not familiar with us. .CMS uh, delivers a digital experience platform uh, that helps organizations to drive business outcomes and have an impact on uh, the bottom line. We were founded in 2003 and we currently have offices in Miami, Boston, and San Jose, uh, Costa Rica. Uh, at the moment, we are attracting growth capital to accelerate our growth uh, by making strategic investments in our product and our product roadmap, and obviously our marketing uh, efforts. It is our ambition uh, to be in the top three of digital experience vendors in three years from now. We work for 150 uh, brands and organizations uh, across the globe uh, that we proudly call our customers. Uh, and this is a selected overview uh, of them. Uh, again, just as a short overview uh, for people who are not familiar with .CMS. This is not an outage. Your computer screen is working fine. Uh, there's nothing wrong. Uh, I'm trying to visualize what some of you might be experiencing in regards to your digital adventures. A black box, no clear direction, no visibility, total darkness. Business teams can't respond quickly enough to changes in the market uh, or cater uh, for demands of your customer. Uh, who has gone digital all the way? How can you drive retention, upsell, loyalty, and eventually the bottom line? If the tools can do the job, you have no insights if your digital campaigns actually work. The technology is not supporting you. The freaking tools are not working and not working together. And if you turn to your IT team, all you hear is, which part of no don't you understand? We cannot do this. And trust me, the IT guys would love to help you, uh, but they're stuck with old technology, uh, monolithic solutions themselves. They want to work with the latest and the greatest frameworks, and instead, they find themselves with a technology stack that goes back to the 1990s. Cumbersome, non-performing, too much effort. Let alone, they can focus on innovation. So what is actually happening here? Well, a lot actually. Um, industries are being disrupted and technology and innovation are the key drivers for this. Uh, business models are changing and new models arise. And, and here are just a, a couple of examples that you probably recognize uh, in your daily life uh, and only came to life uh, recently but feels already like a commodity, right? And, and, and what impact uh, does this have on us as a uh, human being? Well, it's my belief that we've become Citizen D, a digital consumer, patient, constituent, 100% digital. All we do, think, act is digital and digital driven. We raise the bar constantly, uh, and uh, along with that, our demands. We want everything. We want it now, and most of all, we want nice and easy. No drama, just because we can. And if we don't like what we see, uh, we simply move on to the next brand in just a single swipe. So what's really going on here? Well. A couple of things. Uh, if you as a brand uh, want to mitigate this, then you have to move faster. 
and faster. Speed is the new currency, and Mario Andretti set the norm. If everything seems under control, you're not driving fast enough. Size doesn't matter in this new paradigm. You simply have to be fast and eat the slow fish. And on top of that, um, there's other external phenomena that you have to deal with. Uh, increasing uh, number of security breaches, uh, which tend to have a bigger impact on, on business and, and society as a whole. Uh, but also upcoming uh, legislation that could restrict your organization in, in, in their business model. And, and that's a lot to deal with uh, as an organization. So how do you go uh, from here? So according to research done by Accenture and the World Economic Forum, uh, organizations can survive in this digital turmoil by differentiating in, in three ways. First of all, uh, there is focus on experience. Um, it's really not about selling products and services anymore. It's simply not good enough. It's about the experience, both online and, and offline. Consumers want to engage with your brand and experiencing it, and whether it's online or in-store, it has to be consistent and continuous. And there's a serious driver uh, for this, and it's six trillion in revenue that's up for grabs, because this is the estimated amount uh, of customers switching from one brand to another. Uh, last time I checked my bank account, it was not there. So a lot of money to be uh, made. Secondly, uh, personalization. Everybody uh, wants to be unique or at least uh, feel like uh, that he's unique uh, when he's engaging with a brand, right? So don't bother that person with noise uh, or expose experiences that are not relevant to, to him. Uh, because if you do, then uh, they're not likely to buy and, and become a repeating uh, customers. Now, there's two ways of personalization uh, that you see a lot. Uh, first, giving customers control to customize their product or their experience. Uh, there's a couple of examples uh, listed um, here. Uh, secondly, uh, providing more relevant interactions by analyzing uh, customer data. Uh, again, you, you see a couple of examples uh, here as well. Uh, you see the same happening uh, with, uh, with Spotify. Now, Consumers do not appreciate all forms of personalization, so you have to be careful when when personalizing uh, customer experiences. So here you see a list of uh, personalization forms that are uh, welcome or cool, and, and some of them are being uh, recognized as, as creepy. So try to stay away uh, from that. Thirdly, uh, Access-based consumption services, um, so if possible, try to shift or supplement your business model that caters for access-based consumption patterns. Uh, now, this is not always possible for every industry or business, so uh, as an example, instead of uh, selling a car as a car dealer, um, offer an access-based mobility service that allows people to get access to uh, a certain model, a uh, brand new car that they temporarily uh, can have, right? So maybe two weeks later, uh, they uh, they want to try another brand for a number of weeks and maybe eventually um, still buy it. Okay, so now we get to uh, the, the essence of, of no code, right? Uh, we know how to differentiate and uh, stay ahead of the curve in our competition. Uh, and at .cms, uh, we call those uh, the no-code pillars of excellence. First of all, speed. Uh, remember uh, this new currency? Uh, it means, for example, that you should be able to create and pu publish content in just a couple of clicks, or create a new content model, or create complex multi-step workflows just in seconds. Tick-tock, tick-tock. Secondly, uh, customer experience orchestration. Remember, this is a key differentiator. Well, saying and doing should not be far apart, right? So delivering a consistent 
uh, customer experience and, and create content only once and, and repurpose across all your applications and devices uh, is uh, what you would like to do. And even when you run in a headless uh, mode uh, or leverage your digital experience platform as a content as a service, you want to be able to preview the experience in that Angular app that the IT crew uh, built or on your uh, IoT device. It's there and it's possible. Third pillar, team sport. Uh, customer experience orchestration is a team sport uh, with team members in marketing, sales, customer success, operations, uh, and IT. And having a platform that is focused on no code uh, enables team alignment, collaboration, and eventually team success. Ask Tom. So creating content and submit to com complex content approval workflows should be easy. And it can be in just a heartbeat no code, or translating content in 50 languages and collaborate with uh, outside agencies. Easy, no code. Next one, innovation. So uh, a no code platform uh, will free up IT resources so they can work on next generation applications uh, and they don't need to spend time on marketing execution. So let IT build cool apps in modern frameworks like Angular, React, and Node, instead of working with uh, that monolithic solution that locked them in uh, with a single vendor. Open APIs that, you, uh, that help you to integrate with uh, the rest of your marketing stack in hours, days at most, uh, but not years uh, or months. And lastly, uh, connected customer experiences. So being able to map customer journeys and deliver a consistent customer uh, experience for every touch point, every device, online and in-store is really what it's all about. It will create a deeper engagement and, and drives conversion, loyalty and adds to your bottom line. So with those open APIs, uh, you can leverage data that you uh, generate and collect in, in other applications and using microservices, it will help you to uh, achieve this. Now, .CMS offers the capabilities to support you in this endeavor. And uh, for now, I'd like to hand over to Will, uh, our CTO and, uh, and co-founder of .CMS to, to demonstrate what no code entails in our product. Will, the floor is yours. Thank you, Stefan, and welcome, everyone. We're glad to have you here. My name is Will Ezel. I'm the CTO of .CMS, and I want to start out by sharing a story. We were asked the other day by a prospect, and truthfully, we're asked this all the time, but we were asked, what makes your content management system unique? How are you different than the hundreds of other content management systems that are out there? And so bottom line is .CMS is an enterprise-grade Java-based open source content management system that uses best-of-breed technologies such as data grids, Elasticsearch, uh, Angular 2 backend, REST endpoints to deliver a scalable content management solution. But really, that answer is really not interesting. The interesting answer, I think, in, in my mind, but one that's hard to convey, which is why we're doing this webinar, is our no-code philosophy. And what we mean by no-code is that no-code means that the work it takes hardcore Java or C-sharp developers to do in other systems can be done by lightweight technical scripters or HTML implementers or business analysts inside .CMS. .CMS pushes up the level of the, hides the level of complexity from the administrators. And basically through the web GUI, you can you can implement hundreds of sites, thousands of sites um, that are dynamic, that are being delivered and managed by hundreds of users, being content being pushed through workflows and integrating with other systems right out of the box. So this is the .CMS demo site. And you can see it's an implementation of a fictitious financial company called Quest Financial. Uh, it's doing things that you'd expect from content management platforms, things like 
uh, personalization, learning, tracking your user, uh, tracking where the users come from based upon that information, um, automatically categorizing that user, and we're using that information to deliver personalized or customized experiences. The important thing to note with this implementation is that what I'm what I'm going to be sharing today is an upcoming version of .CMS, what we're calling .CMS 5.0. So for those of you who aren't new to the .CMS scene, uh, the starter site's um, been around for years, and part of the reason why I wanted to share it with you um, is because we're going to be looking at be the beginnings of the redo of what we call edit mode in the system, which is the editor's experience, um, and making it much cleaner, much more uh, streamlined, and, and just making the um, the whole experience that much more enjoyable. My point is, is that the starter site ha was implemented years ago, and there's no special implementation required to take advantage of edit mode um, and the new features that are coming in .CMS. Um, it will work for your um, implementations out of the box. So let me log in to uh, the back end of .CMS and show a little bit about what the new edit mode uh, looks like and some of the capabilities uh, in the new edit mode. So if I come to the demo site, you can see here, this is the demo site that you know, .CMS has had for a few years now. And, and I can, um, from the browser now, click in and edit, um, again, any page I have permissions to. And so when I click on a page to preview a page, you can see at what's brought up is a, a, a nice, clean, new editing experience. And it allows you to do things like drag and drop content um, to reorder the content, but you can also drag content between uh, different areas on the page. And based upon um, that area's formatting, the content's going to be formatted differently. And that's happening not on a CSS level, that's actually happening on the server side. Now, for those of you who have been tracking .CMS for a while, um, this new backend uh, editing capability is being really driven by the layout as a service direction that .CMS has taken, which is more than content as a service. What it does is basically delivers not just content, but it also delivers the layout and the order of that content via RESTful interfaces. Okay, let me jump back here and we're going to start by creating a, a new, a completely new site. Uh, .CMS can multi-tenant very easily, and you can run any number of different sites, completely different sites, on a .CMS system or a .CMS cluster. Uh, and it's even you can use blueprinting um, and actually copy existing sites as a blueprint as the starter of a new site that you're going to be launching or developing. In this case, I'm going to go ahead and start with a blank site and I'm going to call it no code. And this is the host name. This works like you know virtual hosting in Apache. Um, I have some other fields here, um, things like the default metadata for any given site, um, site tags, uh, and Google Analytics keys, add this keys. Uh, all of this is manageable uh, in the back end. All of these sort of metadata fields are manageable by, by you as a, as a user of .CMS. So I'm going to go ahead and save this site. And now you can see I have two sites, uh, .CMS, the demo site, and then the no-code site. So what does this mean, having two sites? Um, what it means is if I come and take a look at some of the tooling in .CMS, you can see here this is the demo site. Uh, and you can see here it looks, you know, it's a, a, a file tree uh, where you can see pages and you can see images within the, the given site. If I switch over to my new site, to my no-code site, there's absolutely nothing in it. It's completely empty. And um, it's really a blank slate that I can get moving forward with. And it's, it's easy to provision these sites so that certain users only have access to certain sites and really could be locked down on a site-by-site -site basis. So the next thing I'm going to do is define brand new content type in .CMS. Content types in .CMS are very flexible. Um, they can be defined at runtime. They don't take a redeployment. They don't take a stop and start of the server. Um, you can define them and redefine them and update them on the fly as needed. We have a number of different kind of what we call base types. These have different properties based upon what they are. I'm going to create a type here called promo content. And what you can see here, this, this type is going to live on a particular uh, host. I can go ahead and save this promo content. 
because this is a field, it's going to automatically, or because it's a file, excuse me, it's going to automatically have a number of different fields by default. Um, things like metadata, for example, any file that gets uploaded into .cms automatically gets full text index and the metadata is fully searchable, a description field. But let's say I want to add uh, another field to this content type. I have all these different field types that I can go ahead and define. I can even define a custom field type, which allows me to integrate any given content with a, a third-party system or do custom behavior. For this, I want to go ahead and drop in a WYSIWYG field. I'm going to go ahead and call it uh, body. And I'm not going to make it required. And I'm going to go ahead and add one more field. I'm going to add a special field called tag fields. Tag fields work like you'd expect. It's basically freeform tag, tagging of content and content objects. It's a, it's a really nice and easy to use field. You can make it searchable. They're going to automatically be indexed in Elasticsearch whenever you add a tag field to a piece of content. Another nice thing that we've done with tags is we've integrated tags, tagging of especially images within the .cms with uh, Amazon's AI, the recognition AI. So what that means is that you can upload images into .cms and automatically have those images tagged and recognized using Amazon's uh, artificial intelligence. Uh, we also have a category field, which is more of a controlled vocabulary taxonomy. But as you can see, there's a, a whole number of different fields here. Relationship fields, you can relate content from one content uh, type to another and really build a graph of content as well. So now I have my promo content content type. And you can see here, these are the other content types that the starter site comes with. They can all be deleted and cleaned up. But if I come to the content search screen, you can see what I see is the promo content with all the different fields that, I, that I've made searchable. This can be hidden, make it easier, but it's a very easy, quick way to search content, to find content. It's under, underlied by Elasticsearch, so it's very, very fast as well. I'm going to go ahead and create a new promo content, and I'm going to call this the trail map, for example. And I can choose the, the site or folder that this particular asset's going to live on. And this is, again, permission-based, so you can have only certain accesses to certain sites and folders. I'm going to go ahead and upload an image, a, a trail map image. And I'm going to cut and paste a pre-formatted uh, text on the trail map uh, and go ahead and save and publish that. Just, just to share with you all, uh, let me go ahead and click back into the trail map. Once the content has been saved, um, you can come over and see here uh, the metadata that's actually been parsed out of the particular image. Um, and it's pulling out all of the metadata that's actually embedded within the image itself. And it'll do the same thing for Windows Doc, PDFs, uh, movies, uh, PowerPoints. All of that stuff will be full text indexed as well. So I'm going to go ahead and create another uh, piece of content here. I'm going to say I'm going to create a content called About Bear Mountain. And I'm going to choose a file here. And let's choose a skier. Uh, and I'm going to, in this case, cut and paste from a Word doc, and you can see here um, that you know formatting has been maintained uh, in the Word doc. And I also have access, if I need to, I can get to a code view or a plain view um, if, if needs be. So once I'm OK with that, I can go ahead and save that. Now I have two pieces of content, two pieces of these, this promo content. What I'm going to do now is create a page. And creating a page in .CMS is uh, very simple. Uh, you basically you select the site that you want to create the page in, and you can say, okay, well, I just uploaded my files uh, into the root, but I'm going to go ahead and say I'm going to create a new page, and I'm going to call this page Bear Mountain Homepage. And it's going to automatically suggest a URL. Uh, and here I can select a template. Now, templates underlie uh, what a page, page layout looks like and begins with. Um, and I have a number of different templates here I can choose from. Uh, I have kind of the quest templates. I also have a template called Bear Mountain Theme. Um, and I can choose whether to show this page on menus that are automatically generated or whether I want to statically cache this page for maximum performance. I can also 
uh, give this page a redirect, uh, an SEO description, keywords, metadata, canonical URLs. Pages in .CMS are just content. And so what that means is you can define these fields just like I was building out what a, a promo content looked like. Once I'm okay with my page, I'm taken back to the page in edit mode again. And this is a different layout. This is a one pager called Bear Mountain, which is part of the starter site. It's a fictitious ski resort. And so the nice thing is I can change the layout of this page and I can say, do I want to just change the uh, do I want to change the template and that would change it for all the pages that use this template or do I want to change the layout which would just be this particular page and in this case I'm going to say I'm going to change the layout and I'm going to uh, move that column there I'm going to add a column here and drop a uh, container now this is an editable area uh, maybe I'm going to not show the header or footer I have that option um, and I can add more rows um, as I want. So I can say, okay, here I want 100% across the board row, and I can build out exactly the layout I want. Now this is based on a, on a grid system, a 12 grid system, so it's, it's a very, very flexible uh, templating engine. You can also say if I want a sidebar, let's say a navigation on the right or the left. But once I'm happy with where I'm at, I'm going to go ahead and save that, come back to my content uh, page here, and you can see now uh, what's presented to me is the layout with my editable areas. So let's so let's say I'd like to begin managing the content on my page. What I can do is come to these X's and I can say I'm going to drop a piece of content into this area. And you can see here, these are all the different content objects that um, can be placed into that area. And in this case, I'm going to go ahead and drop the promo content uh, that we had just edited. And here I'm going to go ahead and again choose uh, a promo content that we just added, uh, trail map. And you can see here these two pieces of content, they're brand new. I can go ahead and save that. But maybe I want to add more content. Maybe I want to add actually a, a YouTube widget to, um, to my page. I can say I'm going to drop this uh, YouTube widget. And it goes above the trail map, but maybe I, I want the trail map above the YouTube widget. I can go ahead and just drag that up there and save that as well. And again, the layout can be managed. Um, if I don't want to show the header, I can I can remove that. If I want to move this uh, large uh, single container to the top, I can do that as well. And when I come back to the page, you can see my layout's been adjusted based upon you know the the, the choices I've made. So let me keep going here. Um, I'm going to put my layout back to the way I had it and add the header back, save that, and come back and I'm going to drag my trail map to the top. I'm going to go ahead and save that. What I'm going to share now is uh, a little bit about how uh, content can be edited in line in .CMS. Um, so for example, uh, let's say I wanted to edit this uh, trail map particular piece of content on the trail map. Uh, I can click in and I'm going to, you know, inside editing mode, we're going to get the content editing screen. And, and this is going to give me the full capabilities of editing content um, right within editing mode. So for example, I can, if I wanted to change my, uh, the image, um, I can do things like cropping the image or maybe it's a little saturated. I want to adjust the saturation down. I can desaturate it. And I can save my changes, and now it's kind of a, a, a taller image, and go ahead and save and publish those. And what that's going to do now is when we come back to our page, you can see here that the image has actually been refreshed. What I want to take a look at now is how content and pages and, and just about everything in .CMS can be pushed through a workflow process. And that workflow process is definable by you, again, from the back end, from the from the UI that we're looking at here. So from my UI, I can go ahead and click this pull down types and tags and click on this workflow button here. And this is gonna bring up all the different workflow schemes that have been defined within my system. So let's go ahead and create a workflow scheme for our promotion content that we developed. I'm gonna go ahead and create this new scheme. We'll call it promotions. And we're gonna add that. Now what we do is we add the steps that the content's going to go through in this workflow. So we're going to say the first step is going to be editing. 
the second step is going to be approval. And the third step is going to be uh, published in the, uh, let me edit that, published. And then the fourth step is going to be archived. So these are the four in, of this workflow. These are the four phases of the content. You can have any number of different steps, and you can move these steps around as you see fit. Um, but in each step, what you do to build a workflow in .CMS is you build what the actions that are going to be available to users uh, in that step. So, for example, um, in the editing step, we're going to have an action called Save as Draft. And um, anyone who can edit content is going to be able to save, it, save as draft. Um, you can lock this down to a particular person or a group of people or to a permission. Um, saving it as draft it will require a lock on the content and will only show it when the content is locked and will assign it. It won't take an assignee, uh, it won't take a step. And basically what we're going to do here is we are going to save the content. Actually, what we're going to do is uh, save the content as a draft. The difference is the saved content as a draft doesn't create a new version of the, of the particular piece of content unless the editor has been a different editor. So we can add that action to our editing step. We probably want that same action on all of the different steps. Uh, maybe not published in archive, but definitely in approval. Uh, and, and this is how you go out and you build out your um, workflow. Uh, so the second action that we're going to add is request approval. And who can use this? I would say um, anyone who can edit the content. We want to show when the content's locked and unlocked, and we want to allow uh, the user to select, um, to add comments, uh, request approval, or uh, can assign it as well to a uh, another party. And who can they assign it to? This is you can choose whether they assign it to a particular, a single user or a group of users. In this case, we'll select reviewers. Uh, and the next step is going to be approval. And in this, when this step is fired, we're going to notify the assignee. We will go ahead and then save draft if there are any changes. Um, but what you can do, you can see this list of sub actions that will get fired in order when this step is fired. And this list here is uh, very easy to extend. So you can create custom sub actions that actually occur when a user um, fires a uh, you know, fires one of these workflow actions. Send an email, um, push publish automatically, uh, send for translation, uh, check the links within the content, copy, make a copy of the content, send it to uh, uh, CDN. You can do all different types of sub actions, um, you know, right from the UI. And so I'm going to go ahead and drag that on both editing and approval. Um, and then finally, I'm going to say publish. Maybe this is for someone who wants to skip the workflow. If you have published rights on the piece of content, you can go ahead and publish and assign it to the current user. The next step will take it to the publish state. And what we will do, we will uh, actually unlock the content. And we will go ahead and publish the content. Maybe we want to save uh, save the content. Actually, no, let's save it and create a version of it. Um, go ahead and save that. And we're going to drag that on uh, editing and approval. Oh, you know what? We need to unlock the content when we request approval in case edits need to be. So with the magic of television, we'll speed this process up. Let's see how it turns out. And we're back. 
what this means is now we can come back to our content types that we've defined and take a look at our promo content type. And we can here choose what scheme, what workflow scheme is going to be applied to this particular piece of content. And, and you can see here, um, you know, moving in with, with the 5.0 version of .CMS, you're going to be able to multi-select which workflow schemes are available. And again, based upon a user's permissions, they're going to have permissions uh, to push it through uh, different schemes. So coming back to our content search screen, if we take a look at our promo content now, um, where is it? So now that we've added the workflows to these pieces of content, you can see here they're actually on uh, different states right now. Um, so if I click in, for example, into Bear Mountain content, here's the content, but you can see my options are being driven by what was defined in the workflow. So for example, if I lock for editing, I can return for edits or I can archive it um, or I can release the lock. Let me, this is because it's in the published state of the promotions workflow. If I return it for edits, it unpublishes it um, and moves it back into a, a draft state and uh, you know automatically fires those actions. Let me log in here as and show a demonstration. I'm going to log in as a limited user. Okay, and so a limited user, we, we define the workflow so that a limited user only has limited abilities on um, the, the different content. And you can see here, as a limited user, I have uh, you know, many, many fewer options, very few content types I can manage. But let me come in and edit this Bear Mountain Let's say I wanted to make edits here, and I can say about Bear Mountain today. And what I can do here is I can lock it for editing, I can save it as a draft, or I can request approval. And if I hit request approval, uh, I get a, a workflow window that says, you know, please review and approve. And then I can choose an assignee from a list of the assignees that I defined in my workflow task. So I can say, okay, I'm going to send it either to a reviewer, or I can send it up to a publisher, legal, what have you. And that saves the, the content, sends out an email, and does whatever we defined in our workflow action for that particular action. So what I'm going to do is log out as good old Joe and, um, and rethink our workflow process. Um, maybe we want to add a new action to our workflow process. And, and that's part of the beauty of the .CMS uh, workflow engine is that you can add, uh, remove steps really on the fly, again, without any, any code or without any redeployment. Um, one nice thing that .CMS has is an automatic translation system. And so let's go ahead and add the translations, uh, translation action to the workflow. Let's go ahead and add a new step here, um, which is, or actually a new action, which is request translation. Out of the box, .CMS uh, integrates uh, with Google Translate, but it's a pluggable interface where you can write um, interfaces into Smartly or any other translation services that uh, you might, even, even a, um, even a manual translation doesn't have to be an automated translation service. Um, but let me go ahead and assign this to the current user. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to say, let's translate this particular piece of content. Okay, and to use this particular sub-action, you, you have to provide it with a couple of, uh, uh, couple of pieces of information. Um, first, you want to say what language you want to translate the content into, and you can specify if you have 10 languages that you're using for multilingual content, you can specify which languages you want to automatically translate to. Second, you get to pick which field types you want to, um, you want to automatically translate, so it's not going to go and translate fields that it shouldn't be looking at. Um, finally, you can have it ignore particular fields, and then you need to also supply your Google API service key here. So once we've saved uh, the action, we can um, head back out to the workflow steps uh, and, and drag and drop that, uh, the request translation to the different steps, editing and approval as well. 
um, and it's just e easy to create these workflows and actions and share them amongst the different steps. And here you can see the languages that are set up in .CMS. This is English, Spanish, and Chinese. Um, this is just for an example. Um, you can you can set up as many languages as uh, as you need, and even translate into uh, those different languages. So what we're going to do now is fire the the request translation workflow step. Go ahead and click that, and it, while it doesn't seem like much happened, um, under the covers what happened was an API call, um, and if we pull down show me all languages, you can see now I have about Bear Mountain in three languages. I have it in Spanish, uh, and you can see here that's in Spanish. I have it in Chinese as well, um, and you can see that's uh, in uh, Chinese. And I can do the same thing um, for all my content. I can do that for the trail map, for example, and request translation for the trail map, and refresh my listing, and there's my trail map has been translated automatically. Uh, and here's trail map in Chinese. And the nice thing about the, the translation is that it maintains the formatting. Um, Google's translation is AI-driven. Uh, a very good machine translation, and it does a really nice job maintaining headers, bulleted lists, et cetera. To wrap it all up with the workflow, I'm going to head over to the workflow tasks board. And you know, the workflow is sends out emails to the task assignees that drives them, that takes them back to this board. And here you can see all of the different pieces of content, what step the content's in. You can search content older than X, um, and you can sort by what step and scheme the, the workflow, uh, the contents in. Uh, and you can also do things like bulk fire workflows. So I'm going to go ahead and both Trail Map and Bear Mountain are now in the approval step. I'm going to go ahead and publish and bulk fire that publish. That resolved the workflow tasks. Um, and you can see here the step is published, it's resolved. And both the Trail Map and About Bear Mountain are now published content. So just to recap what we've done, um, in this webinar um, without any code is we've gone and we've created a brand new site called nocode.com. Um, we built a new content type, a promo content type. Um, we then built a page and laid out a page using that promo content type. Uh, we then built out a workflow that we could push that promo content type through um, then added uh, automatic translation to that workflow all on the fly. And um, you know, finally we went and via the workflow we published all the content. And here you can see the Bear Mountain homepage with all of the different content. So the site that we, that we published is called nocode.com. And if we pop open a new browser and go to nocode.com 8080, because I'm running locally, Bear, Bear Mountain homepage, this is our homepage that we just laid out and created. And you can see the, the homepage here is responsive. Uh, the template that's using it is Bootstrap. And you can also see if I change my language, oops, language ID, you can see here now this is the page in Spanish. And then finally I can change it if, even if I'd like to see it in Chinese. And here's the page in, in Chinese automatically translated for us. So I hope that's given you all a, a, a taste of what uh, you can accomplish with .CMS out of the box with no coding. Uh, it's very easy to use and a very powerful uh, enterprise content management system. Thank you very much.